All right, good morning and welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I wanted to talk about a new version of a book that I I just put out uh, called Memorizing Pharmacy Technician Pharmacology. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make all of these books an offshoot of the Memorizing Pharmacology book, which is kind of the foundation. Uh, But I want to show you what the difference is and uh, how I'm going to kind of create these books. So the first thing is that when we look at these books, it's going to be the exam that you're studying for. So in this case, it's the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board, uh, Pharmacy Technician Certification Exam, PTCE, that most people call it the PTCB, and then the Accept Exam, Exam for the Certification of Pharmacy Technicians. And maybe you're a nurse, maybe you're a PA, maybe you're a pharmacy student, uh, whatever it is, and uh, I'm gonna create a version for you. But this version, I just want to talk a little bit about what's different about this and the other ones and then how to use uh, all of the mnemonics. So the new mnemonic that I use, uh, the memorizing pharmacology mnemonic is GM rinse, gastrointestinal, musculoskeletal, respiratory, immune, and integumentary, neuropsych, cardio, and endocrine. And these seven really encompass most of the questions that you're going to have uh, in pharmacology. Now, in this version, I've added dosage calculations, abbreviations, acronyms, and initialisms, and those are like uh, FDA, EPA, um, DE, yeah, FDA, DEA, um, EPA, uh, you know, those kinds of things where even NDC, uh, you've got an abbreviation and you have to know what it is and and where it's from. Uh, Laws and regulations, uh, supplements, Uh, which we're taking apart from uh, these uh, pathophysiologic sections uh, and then other questions. And what you do is is that every time that you take a a practice exam, uh, you want to either mentally or in writing uh, be able to put one of, put the question in one of these categories. And that way you're memorizing and putting all of your kind of material in your brain in this category. So if it's gastrointestinal medication, then you know that goes in GI. Uh, if it's an endocrine, it goes in endocrine. Uh, if it's some kind of dosage calculations. And these are really easy to see. Like you know a dosage calculation question when you see it. You know a law and regulation when you see it. But this is where it gets tricky. The exam is only supposed to have like 40% pharmacology. But when you actually look at the dosage calculations, abbreviations, and laws as they relate and have a pharmacology component to them, it's closer to 60-70% of the exam. So, so important that you're able to memorize these types of things. So as you're kind of uh, going through it, um, what you want to do is, and I'm going to give you an example of uh, kind of this combination. So a patient brings you a bottle of echinacea to the pharmacy counter. What condition are they trying to treat? And you're saying, okay, well, um, echinacea, maybe I'm not familiar with that word. Depression, insomnia, cold symptoms, BPH. But then you start to think, all right, well, let me think of what I do know. I know that if someone is depressed, then they probably go for St. John's wort. If they can't sleep, it's valerian root. Uh, if it's cold symptoms, oh yeah, that would probably be you know the, the echinacea, and then BPH would be salt palmetto. So when you kind of expand all of the answers, it makes it a lot easier to, even if you didn't know the echinacea one, you already knew that, well, depression, St. John's ward, insomnia is valerian root, BPH is salt palmetto. Uh, you could say, okay, well, the other one has to be it because it's not those three. Um, the other thing is, when you're doing this, you also want to expand it to, uh, if you have generic names, expand to the brand names and uh, their stems. And then I talk about the actual stems in here. Um, so fluoxetine, the oxetine stem, uh, the brand names are Prozac and Seraphim. It's an antidepressant. And some drugs do have those two brand names, the Prozac for depression, the Seraphim for PMDD, premenstrual, premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Uh, fluconazole has the conazole stem, uh, which is a brand Diflucan, which is an antifungal. Omeprazole has the prazole stem, which is Prilosec, a proton pump inhibitor. Uh, and then aripiprazole has Abilify as the brand name on uh, an antipsychotic. And then in the book, I go over uh, some tricks to 
uh, recognize these medications, especially the brand names, uh, which is a big component of the pharmacy technician uh, part of it. But Seraphim, for example, a Seraphim is the highest angel. So this angel comes and takes care of this premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Uh, Prozac is more about the sound, uh, that it's a strong sound, but pro, uh, like if you're depressed and you can be proactive, that's a good thing. Uh, Diflucan, um, has part of fluconazole in it, F-L-U-C, and you see it in there. And Prilosec is protons, low secretion. Uh, that's the way to remember that that is for proton pump inhibiting. Uh, and then aripiprazole increases a person's ability. Uh, so it's an antipsychotic. And uh, those little tricks uh, hopefully will help you in addition to having the stems for the generic. So not only can you know the drug class of the generic, but also the brand name. And then, although the, the top 200 drugs um, is you know kind of a, a standard, uh, in this book we have 300 uh, medications instead. Okay, all right. Um, and then when I kind of go into the, the rest of it, I'm kind of talking about... Um, and I wanted to get into one of these uh, actual um, uh, mnemonics here at the end uh, of one of the chapters where I go through the actual exam questions and uh, we can look at something like uh, high alert medication classes. That's kind of a complicated one. Let's, let's go to something that's a little less uh, complicated. Um, so let's do this one. Uh, one of the tough things to remember is which drugs last a week or more. And that can actually be a little bit tough to remember. So what I did was I said, okay, well, let's make the mnemonic methotrexate weekly adverbs. And an adverb, A-D-V-E-R-B-S, is a word that describes a noun. But more importantly, weekly is actually an adverb. Okay, so, when, well, it can be two different things, but uh, weekly is an adverb. And, and what we're going to do with weekly is say, okay, well, these are the drugs that are going to be weekly and we see, all right, methotrexate weekly and then we go into alendronate, which you can take weekly, dulaglutide, trilicity, uh, vaginal rings are actually three weeks, uh, exanatide is bidurian, uh, resedronate is actinel, the birth control patches uh, on and off every week, uh, semaglutide, uh, ozempic. And I also go into some of the you know, tricks to remember them. The fossa max is, uh, the fossa is part of your uh, bone. Um, by durian, something that lasts a long time as a long duration. So that's uh, actinel. Uh, this one acts on the bone. Uh, and so just little things like that are really going to hopefully uh, help you as you move along. But it does have a hundred questions uh, in its own, um, in its own pharmacy technician exam within the book, but it's also telling you how to use practice pharmacy technician exams as you kind of move on. So again, uh, it's um, what I'm going to be doing is taking memorizing pharmacology, expanding it, and narrowing it to uh, the professions. Uh, but the first one I did, memorizing pharmacy technician pharmacology, uh, because uh, again, I, I that's where I kind of started in teaching is teaching pharmacy technicians. Now uh, I teach chemistry, pharmacology, and every once in a while, maybe, you know, one of the anatomy and physiology or pathophysiology classes. So if you need to get a hold of me, Tony, the pharmacist at gmail.com. Uh, but I welcome your questions and suggestions. Thanks for listening.